what dawned on me in that moment was that what got me there was that I had been lying to myself. Like I had been lying to myself. I didn't want to admit that, that I didn't feel good, that something was not right inside. And I realized in that moment, I was like, if, if lying to myself got me here, then what could pull me out is telling myself the truth. And that's, that's when I really started trying to find methods to make my mind lighter. Hello, friends. Welcome. Welcome, everyone, to Sounds True One. This is our fourth live broadcast now of Insights at the Edge, Insights at the Edge Live. And it's so much fun to get to have these conversations and to have you here and with us. All right, here we mm -hmm. go. That's the laugh and the sound of my friend Diego, Diego Perez. And I'm so happy to have Diego here with us for this edition of Insights at the Edge Live. Diego writes under the pen name, Young Pueblo. Maybe you've seen some of his poems and writings on Instagram. Young Pueblo, the name itself is a commentary, means young people, a commentary on where we are as a human species and the maturation and development and evolution that's possible for us. And that's part of what we'll be talking to Diego about. Diego is a meditator and a writer, but let me tell you how I think of Diego. Some people say he's a modern sage a guiding light. Whoa. I think of Diego because I've met him and we've hung out together as, you ready for this? A warm space. A warm space. That was my experience being with him in his presence. So I'm happy that you get this chance to be in his warm space. He's the author of the books Inward, Clarity and Connection. There's an audio book of Clarity and Connection available through Sounds True. And a new book that's called Lighter, Let Go of the Past, Connect with the Present, and Expand the Future. And we'll be talking about some of the themes in Lighter, the themes of personal healing and also our collective healing. And with that, let me uh, bring forward this warm space of a friend, Diego Perez. Diego, hi. Hey, Tammy. It's so good hey. to see you. It's been a little yeah, while. It has. How you doing, friend? I'm doing pretty well. Yeah, I'm happy we get a, a chance to speak right now. To help our listeners get a chance to know a little bit about you, can we start with the fact that you were born in Ecuador and mm -hmm. how you came here to the United States and the journey that you went on to commit yourself to healing. Sure. So I was born in Ecuador in the city Guayaquil that's on the coast. And I lived there with my family until I was about four years old. And my mother and father decided that um, Ecuador was not the best place for us, that there would be more opportunity if we took the big risk of going to the United States. So we ended up moving in 1982 to uh, Boston, Massachusetts. And it was just my mom, my dad, myself, and my brother. And when we got here, um, it was just such a radical change from what life was like. Because, you know, we left basically the, the vast, like 95% of our family um, in Ecuador and came to the very atomized United States. And um, what we found was a lot of struggle. So my mom, she ended up working um, cleaning houses. My dad worked uh, at a supermarket. And a lot of my memories from childhood, and I think a lot of my personal trauma was seeing the struggle that they um, experienced just trying to keep our family afloat. So there was the constant battle of um, them trying to figure out how to pay rent every month and figuring out, you know, how to get us groceries. And, um, it was 
just a, a constant thing that lasted for, I think about a decade and a half, um, where we were really stuck in a poverty trap. And I think what, you know, experiencing that, seeing that um, it really embedded a lot of uh, sadness and anxiety inside of me. And it created a sort of scarcity mindset, this like, fearful scarcity mindset that as I got older and I had no way of processing these emotions, um, they just slowly became very unhealthy habits. And when I got to college, um, I was even further removed from my home and was just in a totally new space. And um, I think those, those, those habits just picked up. And what it ended up looking like was that I was just constantly trying to run away from myself by um, seeking alcohol, seeking marijuana, partying as much as I can, doing a lot of different drugs, and um, just basically pushing my body to the edge like week after week. And it culminated with me, um, you know, hitting the rock bottom moment about a year after I graduated from college where I just did way too many drugs one night and my body was just utterly exhausted. And um, I felt like my heart was going to explode. And, um, you know, basically it was just like on the ground for two hours um, feeling like I was having a heart attack. And what, um, what dawned on me in that moment was that what got me there was that I had been lying to myself. Like I had been lying to myself. I didn't want to admit that, that I didn't feel good, that something was not right inside. And I realized in that moment, I was like, if, if lying to myself got me here, then what could pull me out is telling myself the truth. And that's, that's when I really started trying to find methods to make my mind lighter. And the discovery of meditation, it, it seems like in your life, and I know for some people when they find their path, mm -hmm. it's a big deal. It's a really big deal, a kind of homecoming. And it seems like that was the case for you. Can you share a bit about that? Yeah, it definitely felt like a really big deal. Um, it um, So about a year after that rock bottom moment, like I um, stopped doing the hard drugs, started focusing on just being really honest with myself about whatever I was feeling, challenging myself to just feel a discomfort. And this is before, you know, I wasn't like uh, meditating. I was just like allowing myself to sit with the sadness, with the anxiety, with whatever was coming up. Um, but a year later in the summer of 2012, um, I did my first silent 10 day Vipassana course in the Goenka tradition. And um, that really just like shook me wide open. It just like, um, it was by far the hardest thing I had ever done. And, um, and I really struggled in that first course. Um, but when it was over, I realized that um, my mind felt significantly lighter. And I kept going back, you know, I kept doing more courses. And I've been practicing in this um, method and this technique for about 10 years now. And it just felt like a, it does, it felt it feels like a homecoming. And it felt like this is really what I had been looking for my whole life that I um, this method in particular works really well with my conditioning and um, and it just continues to give me these results that kind of wow me. Yeah. You talk about this process as a type of unbinding. Mm -hmm. That's the word you use. I think it's a really interesting word. And I wonder if you can share more about that, the healing process as unbinding from the types of patterning and knots that are in us from our youth. Yeah, it definitely feels like that. It feels like um, the mind is like so heavily conditioned and you use the word knotted up. Like it literally feels like there are just a limited set of uh, reactions that my mind personally had when it dealt with difficult situations. And it was either like get really anxious about it, get really sad about it and keep bouncing between the two. And um when I started meditating, I like, you know, obviously still feel sadness and anxiety, but the intensity started decreasing. And not only did the intensity decrease, but I felt like my mind had more space. And that was what really kind of shocked me was that, um, you know, I would be able to see my reaction or what I wanted to react, how I wanted to react um, without immediately falling into it. And I was like, okay, I was like, this is what I would normally do in this situation. This is what I've done for years. But actually now I have other opportunities to, you know, maybe I could choose to just behave in a totally different way that actually will benefit me better. And um, I think for a lot of us, like healing is actually just the unbinding of these old patterns 
so that we can breathe, so that we can feel a little freer, so that we can see more instead of just repeat the past over and over again. You write, Diego, in Lighter about moving beyond a survival mindset as part mm. of the healing process. And I want to talk about that because you mentioned how the poverty of your family was so formative in terms mm -hmm. of there being this environment of stress and anxiety. And I think a lot of us, even if uh, we didn't grow up in a lot of economic pressure, mm -hmm. still notice that we were very invested in survival concerns. Like, come on, of course, you right. know, it could be all economic survival, survival of our human form, our health, survival, mm -hmm. of, you know. So tell me more about this notion of moving beyond a survival mindset in, in your own life, how that, how that has worked for you. I think it's been interesting because I've been sort of understanding this like, um, you know, survival and ego go hand in hand, like that's our survival mechanism, you know, and it makes sense, like evolutionarily, like we're, we're trying to figure out how to get from here to tomorrow. So we need to have that sort of short term thinking that defensive thinking um, that comes from really our, the coalescing of ego. And what I've been realizing is that living in that way can definitely get you through hard times, but it does just, it just didn't give me any access to happiness. It didn't help me um, feel calm or feel any peace. And um, what I've been realizing through meditating is that as opposed to living from a place of ego, I need to do my best to live from a place of compassion, to live from a place of being compassionate towards myself and being compassionate towards others. And I've been seeing now that like sort of reframing life through that lens, as opposed to just like me, 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 you know, it's more so let me do my best to take care of myself. But at the same time, like, how can I uh, bring harmony to the situations that I'm a part of? And I think it's taking a, it's taken a long time for me to sort of basically break that conditioning of survival mode, because that's, that's just what I needed at that time in childhood to get me through it. Um, but as an adult, and as I've been meditating, it just, it doesn't help. It doesn't support my happiness. So it um, feels way more aligned to live from a place of compassion. Can you give me an example, Diego, of when a survival uh, mindset, it, it's on you, it's on you right in the moment, it's on you and what you do on the spot? Um, I think a lot of it is like, uh, like even simple moments, you know, like seeing a friend um, do something really well, or someone else in the writing world. Um, and then the first thing that comes up is like jealousy, you know, like I think of that as survival, but then it's like, that's, that will be the first immediate reaction. And then I pause and I ask myself, I'm like, wait, I'm like, am I actually jealous? Like, no, you know, like I'm actually not missing anything out. I'm actually happy for them. And being able to like reframe that and not just repeat what, how I would have reacted in the past, but actually sort of align myself with how I want to show up in the present and in the future. It, it takes that moment, it takes that slowing down. And I think um, a lot of our sort of first reactions are survival mode reactions. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned radical honesty as something mm -hmm. that you committed to uh, early in your healing process. Tell us more about how you use that. Yeah, radical honesty feels, um, I mean, it's a term that's been around for a long time and people define it in different ways. Um, but I like to think of it as the truth that you try to maintain between you and yourself. And I didn't have that, you know, like I was constantly lying to myself. I was constantly trying to just run away from my emotions to just try to hide from any discomfort that I was feeling. And when I um, saw how detrimental that was to my livelihood, I wanted to just do the opposite. And the opposite to me looked like you know, tell myself the truth. Like if you don't feel good, accept the fact that you don't feel good. If you're feeling anxiety right now, accept it, embrace it, let it be there. And, um, and radical honesty wasn't just like a mental component, but it was like a challenge to myself of not just telling myself the truth, but let me actually sit here. So like that first year, you know, after I stopped doing hard drugs, before I started meditating, I would literally just like challenge myself to feel the anxiety as it comes up without immediately trying to roll up another joint, without immediately trying to just like extrovert myself in some manner, 
And I would just sit in my room and sit on my bed and just feel it, like literally feel what it was like in my body and my mind. And um, that actually created a lot of, um, like it broke a lot of illusions. Like it didn't feel all consuming. It didn't feel like the end of the world. And I started realizing, I was like, oh, it's like, I'm actually, I'm okay. Like this sucks, but I'm okay. Okay.